Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, testing. Okay, so welcome to the next video in this series. And today um, we're going to start playing around and looking at the sort of default light features within Maya. And um, hopefully, we, you know, we've added textures, we've created the animation, we can start adding some pretty colors to our scene. So, <clears throat> I'm going to start today from scratch. So, I'm going to go to the Polygons tab. I'm going to create a sphere because um, obviously we're working with bouncing balls. And um, what I'm going to do is just very quickly push W, select the objects, push W, bring it up, just in a bit more of the middle of the space. Um, and <coughs> I'm going to uh, just change that to all one. I'm going to freeze the transformations. I'm going to modify. Three transformations, and uh, that means obviously that will be its default zero position. For today, I just want to turn the grid off, so I'm going to push <coughs> this little grid icon here, which will hide that. And um, we're going to start literally just adding our lights in. I'm going to use the default material for the time being, and um, we'll add another one in in a little while. Um, so what we're going to do is go to create. This time, go down to lights, and I'm going to push this little tab here. Now all of these lights. Um, act differently and um, we are going to engage with uh, a three point light setup which is atypical of film and TV and media production and photography um, but before we do that we're just going to play around with some of these lights okay so I'm going to push this the object will be dark which means our lights are off and I'm going to push ambient light here um, which will create a nice ambient light within our scene and as you can see our objects looking pretty well lit up at the moment now that ambient <coughs> light will project light rays from every single point from this okay and if we go to our this render window here it will render out a scene as you can see if we zoom in it's very it's much lighter on this side than it is this side but it's still overall um, quite bright so <clears throat> if we go to the attribute editor on the left hand side, on the right hand side, sorry, you'll see our color intensity, our color, our color intensity. So I'm going to take that down to 0.5, okay? And you can see the overall scene has changed to quite dark. I'm going to take some shading, turn the hardware texture in a second there. Make much difference, it doesn't look as though it has. Okay, so um, I'm just going to quickly render out that scene again. Um, <coughs> I might add as well, can we make sure you've got my software um, selected? And again, we're just going to take that back down to 0.2 and we're just going to keep going down until we get there we go. Now we can start to see that a little bit better. So our ambient light um, obviously has that kind of influence. I mean, we can turn this light off here as well, which should make it visible again. And um, <coughs> again, if we uh, just bring that window back up and I'm just going to make that smaller um, so this is our render window, this is where we can see what, we, what we've what we rendered if we want to save any of these images we can go file, save image and make sure you're saving it either as a JPEG or PNG um, and um, I mean with our ambient shade here let's turn this down and what we can do is we can save those images oh I didn't want to screen that, no, I didn't want to do that one, there we go um, if we push, oh, we have changed the settings around. Um, so if we, that's our settings. Ah, here we go. This one here. If we push this button, you'll see it saved it. So before it used to be next to these, they've obviously moved it now over here. So we've saved that image, and you can see if I then um, take that down to 0.1. Let's take this back up to 0.5, and yeah, and you can see our overall shading um, isn't too great with this one. So with the ambient, it seems to be obviously heading from all directions. Um, and what we can do is then change that to um, a directional light, okay? And as you can see in the viewport, we've now changed to where these arrows are, and these arrows essentially tell us which direction that light is heading. So if we turn this around. And we take it down to here. Now, by default, the camera is going to render from um, 
our viewpoint. So if we click to render that again, or at least it should. Yeah, now you can see how that's half lit. Okay, much like the moon, if you imagine looking out to space. So um, with our directional light, we, we get the light from that same source. Um, with our point light, uh, in fact, we'll undo that. I don't want to create a new one. I want to change this one into that. So let's just delete that one. So with our direction lock, we change that to a point light. And this is a similar to one to be like the ambient, but this time it should be softer, if I remember correctly. So I'm going to go back up. I'm going to push this option here, which will save that image now. So you can see we're starting to document those different lights. And we can render this out again. And our point light this time is doing the, what, what I thought the ambient was going to do before. So if we move this to the front slightly, um, hopefully we should see that change. It should be a lot softer. Let's just close those settings off. And there we go. And you can see just a little bit of shadow underneath there. You can see a little couple of pixels picking up some light. Okay. And um, <coughs> if we turn that into a spotlight, you'll see, if we turn this light on, hopefully we should see that now influencing this and if we take this back, there we go now you can see how that light is influencing that so within the settings here we can change that cone, we can change the angle, we can change the size of that shadow, you can see it's getting softer if we zoom a bit in a bit more, you can see it's getting softer get the drop off as well, we can change that a really nice soft looking shadow there obviously we can change the direction of that <coughs> so again we will just quickly render again we'll save the image and we'll render a <coughs> new scene as you can see we've got a, a, wide, a wide variety of choices that we can do with our lights and um, don't really use volume light um, but area light is quite a cool one as well so this again um, will only project it through this square so again you can see it coming off and it'll fire it off in all directions um, and you can sort of multi um, put the duplicates of these have one or two uh, which is kind of cool and obviously um, with these lights you can then also <coughs> um, change their colour and you can have sort of two if we get a red and a blue and these two are actually complementary colours not the colours for the eye scientifically not the colours that we sort of taught in primary school which are was all about to do was all to do with um, paints and the technology available as if so if some of you remain with us through HE will learn about that um, so the tool settings are currently in a world that's object World, reset pivot point. So I'm moving a little bit at a weird angle. Um, but anyway, <coughs> so you can see we can start to play with those lights now. If we render them out, you will see we're starting to get that in. And that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're just going to add some different colored lights in, start playing with our scene with the three point light setup. So um, I want to imagine now that um, our object, um, in fact, I'm going to, I'm going to add. Um, very quickly add that those textures and those bump maps that we added in the last session so I'm going to go back to more hyper shade hopefully I can remember where I've saved those images which if I get this up um, desktop it will either be in this one or the other one that will be in the other folder, cool so we'll get our Lambert, we'll just add it to this one for now um, so let's drop it in there Okay, no, nope. it won't let us do it that way. That's fine. We can go to our color, go to file, and we can add in our image. So, scroll for folder, images, and soil cracked. And if we go back to this one. And we go to our bumper normal maps and we go to file again and this time I'm just going to move these out of the way 
a little bit laggy here. There we go. All right. So this one, we're just going to quickly add our bump map in. There we go. There we are. So now we can see that in there. And that's our bump map. Yeah, because we'll be using the default, it won't actually show us the connection. But I'm happy with that for now. Um, that's going to work. <coughs> So, yeah, there we go. Now we can see if we zoom in, we take a render. I'm hoping we can see the blue hitting off the, the sides coming from this angle and the red hitting off the sides coming from that angle. So, if we take a quick render and I'll show you how to render out and make these images. I mean, that's really vivid, but you can see where that blue is coming in from one angle. And the red's coming in from another. Now we can make this resolution on this render image, on this preview image, um, much higher because we are working about half HD, or well, just above half HD. So, um, in fact, we'll quickly do that. So, if we go to our settings, just bring up this window here. And if we go down to our presets here, we've got HD 540. And if we take out HD 1080, <coughs> close that. We'll just do it again. I think we should get a much nicer rendered image. There we go. And you can see how those colours are mixing off each other now in comparison to our viewport. So our bump map's definitely working. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to create this three point light setup. So um, the thing to remember, <coughs> excuse me, I uh, still got a bad chest. Um, the thing to remember about this is that. And this is what we use to get in portraiture lighting, okay? And um, so we're going to change um, these to directional lights. I think this will be the easiest way to sort of demonstrate how this works. So I'm going to change both of these to directional light. Now we always have um, a main light source, a fill light source, and a back light source, okay? So there is always a main light coming in at 145 degree angle, a fill light about 30% coming in from the side so in fact I'm going to type this up um, just so you can sort of see it and you know as I say I always encourage you to take notes so we're going to have um, one times light which is main at 100% light 100% light slash power and this is going to be our main light source. We have one times um, light which is our fill light which is roughly around 30% power uh, and we have one times back back in light oh, put light there and then back in and then back in light and <coughs> that is roughly 50% power. Okay. And these three together will give us our sort of studio light setup. Okay. So if you imagine these <coughs> in a circle and hold shift, it will keep it nice and square for us. If you imagine, um, so that's if you want to see shortcuts, push alt, and it will show you the shortcuts. Um, if we just go to insert, we just get a arrow. So we're gonna have one light coming in here, which will be our main light. We'll have just gonna copy that. We're gonna have our fill light coming in from this angle, okay, which is direct opposition. And then we're gonna have our background light, which is going to come in this way, okay. So the three lights will work in harmony together. So our background light will be here from this angle. Our fill light will come in from either one side of these, and our main light will come from the other, from the last remaining one. So to do that, I'm going to create three directional lights. Um, let's just take these back to zero, and we'll select one and put it out this way. 
we'll select another so if we go to the top view as well in fact let's just go to top orthographic and top and we can get a really clear idea of this so we need to turn this one round so just make sure we've got that line selected and we'll rotate that there to 90 uh, 145 still not completely going across so that's at 0 there you go 180 there we go right so on 80 we've still both got the colours on um, but what we're going to do is just very quickly turn these around but to 35 degrees and we take this one 35 I think I said 45 before um, we'll do minus 35 there and we'll pull both of these out so hold shift select both push W and we can move both of them back I'm just going to pull those in so in fact I think I'm going to take them both I'm going to take them to 45 there we go and same with this one here Oh, 345, don't want that much. So we're going to duplicate this now. And by pushing Control D, so sorry I've sk skipped that, so pu push Control D, it will duplicate. We'll take it back to zero. And we'll just rotate round, round to here, which is 90 degrees in the rotate Y. <coughs> And we're going to go to our attribute editor. So this one is our backlight. We want it at 0 0.5. So we're going to put that as a white light for now. And with our fill light, we want that about oh, 0 0.5. Let's just go back there. So we want this at 0 0.3. And we'll change that back to a white light. And finally, we'll take our main light, which will be 1.0 and we'll take that back to the right okay and as you can see okay it's just lagging a little bit we've got a main light source sitting we've got a softer light to complement and we've got the background light oh because yeah it's not turning because I'm on back view so now what we need to do is just select these push W and just take them down around the object just to make it a little bit more so if you imagine we're taking our image our photograph from this angle here and you'll see we've got quite a nice setup so that's our main light this is our fill light so you've got our main light source here and yeah and we can turn <coughs> the ball around as well and you can see now um, those lights in action so again now this is your sort of typical studio light setup. Gives a main focus area, gives that softer shadow, and it gives us light from the back so we can see the outline of the body. So there's contrast between the objects in the background um, where there may not have been before. That's so that's why I use it in photography. So um, I think the next thing I want to do is just start to play around with some colour. So I'm going to add in. Um, I think we'll try a, a sort of softer purple this time. So our main light will sort of keep as a, I think we'll do it as a green, as a sort of greeny colour. And um, to complement that we'll go for a sort of pinky purple. Some of it's almost like the joker colours, in fact yeah, let's, let's add in a red at the back. See if we if we actually do pick any of that up, so you can see that very subtly there. Let's pick that up, which is pretty cool. Um, <coughs> and obviously, if we go to our render view, you can almost you can see that now. I mean, that looks really horrid from the distance we are at. It looks really grainy. So I'm going to zoom right in um, and get a, another picture. So you can just see that red hitting off this section here so let's get right in there and let's take a render and yeah nice look at those colours play off each other and I mean it's very it's very heavy on the eyes um, 
but again just with creating lights you can see how we can add a bit of colour to our scene make it seem more vibrant a bit more exciting than perhaps it was um, if I take the bump map off just very quickly just to sort of demonstrate that so let's just get our render view let's just save that image again and if we go to um, where do we want to go? That's it. Turn our bump map off. Let's just delete that very quickly, and let's take another render. And you can see now how different that is. We've got red sort of around there. We've got a purple light here. We've got a main um, green light there as well. And if we just take that shot, and we can see. Just that sort of difference now between the two that we had. Just adding that bump map changes the texture, the feel, the surface, the way that light reacts. And obviously, if we just zoom out a little bit, just so it's not so heavy on the eyes, you can see how different that looks. Just by changing that one aspect. So, um, for your overall scene, you may want to pull the lights further out. Um, you may want to so if we take these further back actually just sort of demonstrate this so if we pull them further back just go object there we go right if we pull these further back you'll find that your whole scene will get will become illuminated and will cast shadows um, but the light will always travel all the way across this direction from every line so if I put a ball over here as well that line will still show so let me just go back to world okay doesn't really matter if there's too much you'll see how that changes out would be a lot easier to see if we didn't have to have that selected so what I'm gonna do is just very quickly set a keyframe so I'm just gonna use a shortcut pushing S which for this demonstration will work but not for your um not for your animation, I don't want you to do that I want you to um, do this properly, so again if we push play you'll see that that light stays in the same position okay so um, have a play around with these lights you may want to use some of the different ones, experiment with the spotlight, maybe experiment with the volume light, it's entirely up to you. Okay, um, I'm not bothered. Um, just have a play around and experiment. I've seen some really good stuff coming out, so if we can keep, keep going, keep pushing it, um, we'll have some good work to sort of show when you're doing your presentations. Okay, so um, good luck, and um, I'll see you in the next video, which will be talking about rendering out your sequence and exporting it into a video file. Okay, take care.